something that's going to alleviate, that's going to help many of us that struggle with anxiety, that struggle with worry, that struggle with stress, that struggle with boredom, that struggle with depression, uh, despair, in other words, you feel hopeless, you feel discontent, and that word is called faith. But here's the thing that I want you to get. Many of us, if we were to say, or if I were to ask you right now, how many of you really want to displease God? In other words, you don't want to please God at all. Nobody would raise their hands because we all deep down have a desire to please God. But the Bible says that it is impossible. Can we say the word impossible? Impossible to please God if you don't have faith. And so, if you want, if I were to say, how many of you want to displease God? Nobody would lift their hands because you guys, you know what he has done. He's brought Jesus. Uh, it's not just a, a fiction story. Uh, Jesus, his son, came to die for your sins to give you a chance that you were doomed. What you really deserved was hell. What you really deserved was damnation. But instead, you're getting a second chance in life. And so, Jesus came and so... If I were to say, well, do you want to displease God? You would say, no, I don't. I want to please him. Do you want to please him? Your faith has to increase. And you have to please him with your faith. Now, there's a, a lot of optimistic and positive people in this world. But that's not faith. There's a lot of people that go around with, a, you know, like, when, when I deviated from the things of God at 20, 21 years old, and I hit the world hard from 21 to 34, I remember that during that period, I didn't resemble Christ. I, I was a crazy man out there in the nightclubs and whatnot. But the scenario was that my faith in him had diminished, and my anxiety increased. Everything came into me. I, but I still had a positive attitude. For the most part. The only negative was that when I went to bed at night, my anxiety and my worry level was so high that I had to pop a volume or a, a Xanax to go to sleep because I was so tense. Now I sleep better than ever, my wife will tell you. I mean, we may have a little disagreement about something. I, and, you know, I try to always, baby, I love you. The, the Bible says don't go to bed angry. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes you got to give one of those angry kisses. Bye. <laughs> and that's okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, we got to be real out here. Nobody here has it all together. We may fake it till we make it, but nobody really has it together. We all need a crutch, and that crutch is Jesus Christ and our faith. Because both together bring power. Both together bring blessings. Both together bring favor. Both together create your miracle. And so, let me ask you a question. What's the opposite of faith? Huh? Doubt. 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 Who else? Who said that? You deserve an A. The opposite of faith is not fear. The opposite of faith is not doubt. The opposite of faith is sight. Turn into your Bibles to Hebrews 11.1. 1. Hebrews 11.1. 1. And as you're getting there with Hebrews 11.1, 1, I'm going to prove to you that by the word, not by popular opinion, because we know that everybody's got an opinion. But in the end, the judge determines who's right and who's wrong. And that's the judge of God Almighty. Now, it says in 11.1 1 in Hebrews, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So the opposite of faith is sight. Because faith is not seen. If I'm praying for Marcelino to be my friend, he's already my friend, that's not faith. If he, him and I have an argument and he, he left for a couple of Bible uh, church services and, and I want him to come back, you know, I, no, I know who he is. So That's not faith. That's called like wishy, wishing. That's called something else. But faith is when you don't see it and you can still declare it. Turn to 2 Corinthians 5.7. It says there, For we walk by faith, not by sight. 
Jesus went to the cross, which wasn't a very easy thing to do. I'm sure many times he had second thoughts about in that road of uh, uh, the Via de la Rosa when I went to Israel. It was so impressive uh, walking through that where he walked with his, with his cross going to Calvary. I'm sure many times he's like, why am I doing this? Uh, uh, why am I doing this for mankind who constantly lets me down? Why am I doing this? But he went to the cross because he knew that God the Father was going to resurrect him after he died. He had faith. Now, I haven't met one Christian that has raised their hand and says, I want to displease God. How many of you want to please God? Okay, so if you want to please Him, you have to engage that faith is not there to create things that we don't see. You know what faith basically is? Faith is moving things from heaven to earth with your mind, with your spirit connected to God. Many of us, we... Pray for something to happen. Father, fix my marriage. Father, fix my, uh, I need you to heal my body. I need you to take care of my, uh, my teenager uh, that's uh, jacked up and messed up in drugs. I need you to take care of my job situation. My finances are low. We pray, we pray, we pray. But you know what happens? After we pray, we curse our blessing with our mouth. We curse our blessing with our doubt. So you believe it, God, Jesus wants you to believe it, but then you curse your own blessing that's been released from heaven with what you say. Because the Bible says there's death or life in your tongue. What are you, you tell me what you speak of and I'll tell you your future. I don't have to go to a mind reader or a card reader or what are those or whatever they are, horoscope, whatever, to, to find out answers. I just have to hear you speak for a couple days. And I will know where your destiny is headed. Because you will either speak life to your marriage. Oh, my husband won't change. My wife is this. My wife is a nag. Yeah, yeah, you will either, oh, you know what? I guess I'll always be sick with diabetes. Oh, I guess I'll always be a dead-end job. I guess I will always. If you speak death, you shall have death. If, you know, let the joy of the Lord come out of you every now and then. But, and let me tell you how this works. In some things are done, some things are already done, and some things must be declared by faith. The fact that you pray about it is that you're already believing it. In other words, God has given you the ability to recognize that you could do this, that you could actually have this. And let me explain to you, because I love visuals. First of all, let's go with a little example. Jesus told the woman with the issue of blood for 12 years. She touched the hem of his garment. The woman became instantly healed. Now... Jesus didn't say, hey, I healed you. Jesus said out loud, there was a multitude of people touching him. Hey, master, hey, master, hey, Jesus. Hey. And Jesus all of a sudden stopped and told his disciples, somebody has touched me. And the disciples were like, well, what are you talking about? Everybody's touching you. He goes, no, no, no. Somebody touched me because I felt virtue come out of me. I felt the healing come out of me. And, he goes, and then he starts looking around the crowd. And he notices the woman that's weeping. She's crying. She's healed. She's thanking God. And all of a sudden she goes, Daughter, your faith has made you whole. He didn't say, daughter, I have healed you. He said, your faith has made you whole. On her way to touch the hem of Jesus' garment, if she would have doubted, what are you doing here? You're not going to get your miracle. If she would have said, eh, you know what, you know, he doesn't care about my healing. If she would have done any of those two things, and, and, and my God, I want you guys to get this because a lot of us have the power source, which is Jesus, but we're missing out on the faith connection. You are the faith. The power source is Jesus. Many of us believe in the existence of Jesus. whoop de doo so does the devil. You're not impressing me. The, the power of Jesus Christ is power connected with your faith 
that will bring your, your miracle, your healing, your whatever it is, your breakthrough. But if you're connected to the wrong power, let's say you're connected to what the Mekal, let's say you're connected to horoscopes, let's say you're connected to uh, palm reading, let's say you're connected to uh, uh, voodoo, uh, uh, Muhammad, or you know, Jehovah Witnesses, uh, all these 1,800 religions in the world. One of them has got to be right, and that's and the only one that's right is the one that resurrected from the dead, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> A lot of co-mediators. Santa Barbara, San Bas, San Lazo, La Caridad de Core, 1,800 religions. But only one resurrected from the dead. Only one was born of a virgin. Only one died for your sins. Only one declared that he was God. Only one said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father unless they come through me. And so the power source has got to be God, Jesus Christ. So you, all, you can have all the faith that you want in your voodoo, but if you're connected to the wrong power source, you ain't gonna come your, you're not going to receive your blessing. But if you have the faith in Jesus Christ and you're connected to that, expect a miracle. Expect your blessing. Expect your, flavor, your favor. And so the power source is one thing. But here's a more elaborate illustration. How many of you like underwater hunting? My oh, brother, we've got to do that. Okay, this is, this is, I'll tell you, we've got a lot in common, man. And uh, this is my spear gun. Now, it's not loaded, so don't worry. I can point it, nothing's going to happen because it's not loaded. The way you load it is you get the band and connect it to right here. You get the other band and you connect it to right there. You never load a gun on top of the water. You never load a gun in the boat. You always load a spear gun. I've caught like 100 fishes in this already, or over 100 fishes. You only load it in the water. Now, the faith is the band. The gun is Jesus Christ. The gun has power. This is a 42 special. You point it out to a fish. I usually go underwater like this. I point to a nice hogfish, snapper, grouper, whatever. Bring, bring it in. Meal time. But if I go, but if I go underwater with this, just like this, and I'm trying to, uh, to shoot something. <coughs> Nothing is happening because the faith is not engaged. Faith has to be engaged. Uh, this is the knob right here to bring it in. Faith has to be engaged in order for this to take off. In order for it to have the power. So the power without your faith doesn't bring a fish. Are you getting this? Yes. Because a lot of us have two things. We have unbelief and we have misbelief. Can we say unbelief? unbelief. Misbelief. misbelief. What's the difference, Pastor? I'll tell you right now. Unbelief is your inability, your rebellion, your refusal to take the word, the instruction manuals for life, at face value. We have a manual for everything. My iPhone came with a manual. Your refrigerator comes with a manual. Your truck, your car comes with a manual. Everything comes with a manual. This is the manual for human beings. So you either take it, you do what it says, or you don't. Like if I get my iPhone and I put it underwater, it dies. If I get my iPhone and I put it underwater and the fire, it burns. you got to follow the instruction manuals for you to have the best life possible here on earth. Now, many of us, we look good, we smell good, and one thing is looking good and smelling good in the, in the outside. Many, many do it quite well. But remember, we are tri-dimensional human beings. We have an outside body. We have a soul which consists of the mind, the emotions, and the will to choose. Power of a made-up mind. Uh, uh, people can't move me. I, I'm not easily shaken when storms and stress and stuff comes because I'm already rooted in Christ Jesus. So whatever comes, I'm already rooted. My mind is made up here. So when the storms come here, I already got my mind made up because there's power in a made-up mind. But, and then comes the other 33 and one-third of you, your spirit, which the only purpose of the spirit is to connect you with God, to have fellowship with God. 
like you have with you know, me and with my wife. We have fellowship. Uh, me with Marcelino, we have fellowship. Tuesday, he came over to my house. We were watching the Heat game, expecting Kobe Bryant to pray, to play, but he didn't play. But anyway, uh, uh, Marcelino and I, we have fellowship. We have a relationship. And so unbelief is your inability, your refusal, your rebellion, your stubbornness to believe that Jesus and your faith can do things. Misbelief, on the other hand, is you putting the ban, which is your faith, in something else. Well, let me attach it here. No, it won't work if you attach it there. It only works when you put it here. So if we attach it to things that are false gods or co-mediators to the truth, you're not going to get your answer because there's only one power. And that power is, only has one way. And that one way only has one truth. And that one truth only has one life, and that's Jesus Christ. So if you connect yourself... If you connect yourself with the power source, with your faith, you will see blessings. Now, what is faith? I'm glad you're asking. Faith is these, these six things I'm going to leave you right now. Because, number one, faith is believing when I don't see it. Believing when I don't see it. Believing. You know, a lot of times we're fighting battles that we don't need to fight. Uh, I was talking to somebody today, and they're like, Eddie, I've never seen you stressed. I go, well, I'm, I'm intense. I'm intense. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm hyper. That's, that's my personality. Uh, I'm a type A. But when I go to bed, I surrender everything to God. I got zero stress. If you have stress today, if you're worried about something today, it's simply because you haven't surrendered it to the great I am. Because whatever you don't surrender to God Almighty brings stress. Let's say that together. Whatever I don't surrender to God brings stress. We need to surrender to God and position ourselves. And st You know how many times in the Word, I was Googling this week, how many times in the Word it says, be still. And see the deliverance of the Lord when Moses told the Israelites. Here they are. They left Egypt 400 years in captivity. They're walking through the dry desert in the wilderness. All of a sudden they get to in front of the Red Sea. And they're in front of the Red Sea and the Egyptians are coming after them. But the Bible says there was a, um, a fire by night and a cloud by the day so they wouldn't get bur bur burned or scorched. And so now they face the Red Sea and they're like, okay, what do we do now? And they start moaning and griping, complaining like... I know like none of you ever do, but they start doing that kind of stuff. And all of a sudden, Moses just says, be still and see the deliverance of the Lord. Why can't we have that scenario with our life? Be still and watch the deliverance of the Lord. Why do we have short-term memory that we forget stuff when the, when the first storm comes and hits our way? Why can't you remember all the times that God has brought you out of the fire and out of the storms and out of the pits of life? But you've got to remember everything at that moment. Oh, we believe that Jesus could save you. Amen. But what about Jesus being able to change you? What about Jesus able to change your thinking? The man I am today is not the man I was when I gave my life back to God at 34 years old. 34 years old, I was, you know, whatever, had my habits and hang-ups. But at 34, I said, you know what? I have no peace. I have no joy. I'd rather go back to the things of God. And then I started having faith in God, slowly but surely, until I surrendered everything to Him. And that brings me perfect peace. There is, there's nothing in this world that can bring you perfect peace except having that connection in your spirit of God. Amen. So in 2 Chronicles, it also says, uh, you will not need to fight this battle. Position yourselves. Stand still. Stand still. In Philippians 4.19, it says, well, for those of you that are worried about, about your bills being paid and, and getting, losing sleep at night, for guto and, and whatever, it says in Philippians 4.19, this was a verse that I applied to me when I changed my lifestyle. I was a, a top 50 realtor in the state of Florida. 
from 2003 to 2008. And then when God started calling me, he goes, hey, I want you as a full-time minister. I go, no, 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 I don't want to let go of that money. I'm making too much money. This was the verse that I hung on to. Because there is a difference when you're making $25,000 a month and when you're making $2,500 a month. So my verse that I stood on, for those that are having financial worries about your needs being met, about your bills being paid, about your mortgage, your rent, whatever, Philippians 4.19. Your God, my God, shall supply all, can we say all, all, of my needs. What's the needs? What's needs? Food, your clothes, and your home. It doesn't include your Louis Vuitton, your Michael Kors. It's just your food, your clothes, and your home. All the other stuff, you don't need to stay in a Biltmore for the weekend. No, it just includes your meals, it includes your house, and it includes your clothes. You're covered. You're 80% richer than, than the rest of the world. But yet America is number one in sleeping pills. Do you think somebody is trying to confuse people? Because faith is basically a battlefield. What's the battlefield? The world and the word. That's the battlefield. The, the word and the world out there, they're going at war for your will. Remember I told you that one third of you is your soul, which consists of your mind, your emotions, and your will. Your will chooses. Choose today who you will serve. Choose today if you're going to believe this or not. Choose today if you're going to surrender that one third of you that needs to be surrendered. That once you, see, your body's going to die someday, but your spirit is going to live on forever. Where is it going to live? In eternity with God or in eternity in the pits of hell? I mean, I didn't say this. Jesus said this. He said, and, oh, don't talk about hell. It's kind of negative. I don't want to hear that. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. It's not a fiction story. Hey, I, I'd rather be wrong in thinking there's no God. I die at 90 years old. I lived a good life, decent human being, good workout partner. And all. But I die and life goes over. I'm six foot under, no big deal. But if I'm wrong, I lose it all. Eternity is too long to be wrong. Number two in what's faith? Obeying when I don't understand it. Obeying when I don't understand it. Number three, giving when I don't have it. I got one amen out of that, okay? Number four, persisting when I don't feel it. Persisting when I don't like it. Let me shut up. No, nah, it's too strong. Too strong. Some of y'all can't handle it. Yeah, no, 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 no. Thanking, number five. No, no, you're not ready for it. You're not ready for it. I, I, because I got one amen from number three. I, I'm not going to say it. If I would have gotten like ten, ah. Number five, thanking God before I receive it. Thanking God when I receive it. And number six, what's faith? Trusting even when I don't get it. Oh, Lord, help me. You see, when we pray, a lot of us, we think God is like a genie in the bottle. Oh, Master, oh, great, oh, holy one of Israel, oh, Father, creator of heaven and earth, oh, thou majesty. When we pray, we expect, which is a good thing, God to deliver the answer. But here's where we go wrong. When we get a different answer, that's not what we prayed for. Because when we pray for something and God says, hey, I'm your father who knows everything about you. I created you before the foundations of the, wor of the world. I knitted you together individually in your mother's womb before you came out into this world. Your parents gave you a birth suit. But I had already created you. I gave you the breath of life. You're alive and everything that you have is not because you're all that in a peanut butter sandwich. You are all that because of my grace and my mercy. Because of how I love you. And so the longer I live, the more I want to walk in humility because 
as you walk in humility, you get exalted. I want to walk in humility in my relationships, especially the one with my wife. I want to walk in my relationships with my parents. I got to honor them. I don't agree with them in all things, but I got to honor them. I got to uh, walk in humility with my friends around me. Uh, humility is one of the most beautiful things to have. When you think you got it all together and you're, uh, because sometimes people call me arrogant and at times maybe I have been, but it's more confident than arrogant. I have a tremendous confidence, but here's where I have fallen short sometimes. Sometimes I have been a little bit overconfident and when you're a little bit overconfident, then that's called arrogance. Now, immediately when I go overconfident, the Holy Spirit speaks to me. You don't got to tell me. The Holy Spirit speaks to me because I already got a direct line. The Holy Spirit, hey, wait, wait, who do you think you are? I gave you the breath of life. I formed you in your mom's womb. Uh, you are where you are. I chose you to be a minister. You didn't, it was not because of all that. You could have been deaf, dumb, and blind. But I gave you grace and favor. I gave you mercy. So you know what? I'm going to bless you. You honor me, but walk in your military. Okay, okay. I get back into my fetal position of humility. Because humility is what really... Hey, I, walk, I, I see these uh, muscle heads in the gym sometimes. You see them in the gym uh, Hey, what's up, brother? The other day I was saying hello to somebody. Hey, what's up, brother? Hey. Okay, bro, because you have 20-inch arms and I have 16-inch arms, you're better than me? No. But pride sometimes kicks in, and then you're like, all right, let me show them what I know. No, 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 no. You, you know what's confidence? Confidence is when you don't have to prove yourself, and you, got, and you can live with nothing to hide. You can live with nothing to hide. And you don't got to prove yourself to nobody. You are a son or a daughter of the great I am. You are a son of a daughter of a king of kings. You are the son and a daughter of the Lord of lords. You can just walk with your head up high and faith connected to your source, your power source of Jesus Christ, and your blessings will come. But if they don't come for whatever reason, because God says, I got something better for you, because God says, what you're asking me is not beneficial for you because you want the car because you want that job. But if I give you the car and if I give you the job, you will turn your back on me. But if I give you the car and I give you the money and I give you everything that you're praying for, and are you praying for that man that's no good for you that's going to leave you out of the things of God or that woman that's going to leave you out of the things of God? If I give him to you, you will turn your back on me. And then the thing that you need more is your connection with me. The thing that you need more is my, your joy and your peace than all those things. So just trust me, even though your answer is not being given. So when you pray, like the Lord's Prayer said, let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So when I pray, I say, Lord, I want this. I want 350 people, 300 to 500 people in this ministry, two years, two years in church. Starting off, we had 90 people at the other place. Here, we're averaging like 50 to 60. I go, Lord, I want 300. But if 300 is going to get me away from his will, I don't want it. So after I'm finished praying and asking by faith, connecting to the power source, I always leave a window. But Lord, nevertheless, can we say nevertheless? nevertheless. Your will, not mine. That word right there, nevertheless, is a sign of surrender. Amen. That word right there is a sign of humility. That word right there will make you sleep better at night. Because who else wants the best for you? Has God ever, has anybody ever had a regret? Hey, you know what? I used to serve God. Now I'm just a piece of junk. No, no nobody has had regrets. You just made the, those choices. But if he has the best for you, can you trust him? Can you trust them even though what you're praying for is not the answer you were expecting? Can you trust them? See, when you have, when you're living with complete faith, you can rest. Can we say rest? When that's happening in your soul, peace, tranquility. When that's in your soul, you can have an argument with your spouse. Baby, I love you. We'll settle it tomorrow. Oh, they fired me. They let me go. Oh, my finances are low. Oh, I just got diagnosed this with the doctor. Because you know that your father, 
who loves you more than anything or anybody here in this whole planet has the best for you, whether in this lifetime or the next. But whatever it is, it's for your best. And so if you just trust them, if you can just trust them, you will sleep better at night. If you can just trust them, you can put that sleeping pill away. If you can just trust them, your anxiety levels will go low. If you can just trust them, your depression, your, uh, your loneliness, your discontent spirit, always complaining and murmuring, nothing is ever good for you. Uh, that will be a thing of the past because you are already rooted in the great I am. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, I wanted to, I'm going to post this on Facebook tomorrow. My version of what's faith. My version says that you believe in God's power, that you act on what you believe no matter how you feel, knowing that God has promised you good results in the end. And these three ways are what's going to get you to have more faith so that you can have more peace, because it's just like working out. It's just like a relationship. It takes work. When, when people tell me, hey, how's marriage life? Hey, it's wonderful, but it's work. It's work. And, and, and couples that don't work in their marriage, they either digress or fall apart. Marriage requires work to keep elevating. Because if you stand still, you're going down. So you're either growing or you're standing still or you're digressing. And, and my wife and I have made it a mission, a purpose, to be ministers of the gospel and, and grow to help other couples and help others. But let me tell you something, especially those two right there. When you have, and those two right there too, when you have a calling in your life, when God has said, those two, I'm going to help, the, I'm going to... I'm going to put some fire in them. You know, the, the fire brings out the gold. The fire brings out the, the diamond. I'm going to put some fire in them so they can be my voice, my instrument, my mouthpiece here on, on earth. If you're chosen for something like that, you're going to get attacked. You're going to get in the fire. You're going to have to earn, earn your testimony. It's not just going to be a testimony that's just going to be given to you. Hey, go there and preach to all the nations. Hey, go and make a DVD. Hey, yeah, no. you're going to earn it. You're going to suffer a little bit. And it's not that bad to suffer. Suffer brings out good things sometimes. But, no, no, but what happens? People don't want to suffer these days. Oh, no, 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 later. And they dismiss the purification process. They don't want to go through the fire. They don't want to go through the, the school of hard knocks. They want to get their doctor's degree without going to college. And so that's how a lot of, they want that microwave mentality. No sacrifice whatsoever. Everything is easy, just give it to me. Uh, where do I sign up? Uh, 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 no, if you're going to be a mouthpiece in your work, like my brother Alvaro over here, he, God has put in his heart, to bring the gospel to his employees. Once you say, choose me, God, choose me. I, 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 hey, God, pick me, pick me, pick me. Like, you remember, like, those of you who used to play sports, when, 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 uh, when you were a captain or somebody was a captain, and there was, like, uh, we needed to pick teams, and, okay, I get him first, I get him second, I get, and then, like, if you're like, oh, my God, I'm going to be left out. Hey, hey, pick me, pick me. If you say that to God, hey, pick me, pick me, and he picks you, Expect to go through some fire. Stand still. Let your faith be engaged in the power and walk it out. In the end, you win. In the end, you win. In the end, you win. You're not going to even smell like smoke. But you're going to have to go through the fire. Look at what James 2.26 says. Because a lot of, there, there, there's some people here that because they have faith, and of course, when you have faith, hear me out here, when you have faith, no explanation is necessary. But when you don't have faith, for those of us that 
ah, you know what, uh, I got to see it to believe it. Remember what I said, the opposite of faith is sight. When you don't have faith, uh, let's go back a little bit. Faith, no explanation is necessary. But when you don't have faith, no explanation is possible. You can talk to your blue in the face. If there's no faith, the power is useless. In Romans 10, 17, it says, Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. How many of you are hearing the Word of God tonight? Amen. Okay, your faith is increasing. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. So if your faith is increasing, that's a good sign. Another good thing is in James 2, 26, where it says, For the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works, can we say works? Is dead. So in other words, if I have the spear gun and I have faith, but if I don't do the work, engage the, the band with, with, with the spear gun, with, with the tip over here. If I don't do the work, faith without the work is dead. Faith without the work is dead. Faith requires work. And into the power source. Amen. 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 Well, you guys ain't going to forget this. I thought about this at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm like, I got to get that gun out there. Look at what Habakkuk 2.4 says. Behold the proud. Nobody's proud here, so we're not talking to you. His soul is not upright in him. But the just, in other words, for just, uh, when you look at different translations in the Bible, it, it means righteous, shall live by faith. Can we say live? live. By, faith. by faith. We live by faith. by faith. We don't live by feelings. We don't live by emotions. Sorry, women. Emotions are a good thing. I have, we all have emotions. But we don't make decisions based on emotions. We make decisions by faith, rooted in Jesus Christ. The most miserable people I've seen in the planet are people that have made decisions over and over in their 40s, 30s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. They're about to die and croak at 80 years old, and they've lived a whole lifetime basing decisions, making decisions on the flesh, emotions, feelings. Oh, I feel this. Who cares? Your feelings are wrong. They're fickle. They're up and down all the time. Focus on faith in whatever storm you're going through tonight and those watching online. Whatever storms you're going through tonight, whatever the doctor has diagnosed into your body, about your body, whatever your situation at work and your finances, whatever it is, the Bible says in Philippians 4, 6, do not worry about anything. Instead, pray and give me thanks. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. God is saying, basically, I got gotcha. you. Whenever I have a storm that tries to creep in and, and I'm going to lose a little sleep or a little bit of anxiety, I take a deep breath. God, I trust you. God, I trust you. God, I trust you. Now back to the regular schedule program. God, I trust you. God, I trust you. Now back to the regular schedule program. That's my thinking. How's your thinking? Do you entertain that thought and you let it run like zzz, like a fish on a line? You let it run and you and you go back and forth and, and, and all of a sudden you're like at the end of the day you're like exhausted. And then you know what happens? God comes to your rescue anyway. But your blessing is delayed or your prayers are hindered. You got to go through some unnecessary turmoil and anxiety when God's got you. Faith is believing in his promised word, no matter what your emotions are saying. Amen? Amen? And you know what? As we're about to close like in five, ten minutes, sometimes your biggest blessing, sometimes before your biggest elevation, sometimes before your biggest promotion comes the worst day of your life. Every time I have gone through a bad day, I try to stay calm and be still rooted in my God. Because, of course, I'm not going to be, Garrico, 
Banquete. No. I'm going to be rooted in the great I am, but this is what comes to my mind. Some people, not you because you guys are, are, are Navy SEALs in Christ, but other people, I'm talking about people out there, they go to other churches, or other churches not Navy SEALs here that, that you really want to grow, you know, not those that just, they're CEO Christians that just come for, you know, Christmas and Easter only. I'm talking about the real Christians, the ones that, that really want to be, you know, so I'm talking to those, to you guys. Sometimes, when, I, when all hell has broken loose, I always say, God, I'm not enjoying this, but I trust you. God, I'm not enjoying this, but I know you have the best for me. God, I'm not enjoying this, but I know that if you take care of the sparrow in the tree, I know that if you know if that bird fell down over there, bird number 7,059 that you created or whatever, I know that you got me. I know that if you take care of the sparrow, you shall certainly take care of me. So therefore, I'm going to sleep. And I leave it to you. I surrender because I'm not, I don't want this stress in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. And that's what I do. And the Bible says he's got the hairs on your head, not ours, bro. But the hairs in our head, he's got them counted. He's got to count it. That means that right, the one that fell off when you were like 45, uh, that one was, or 35, that one was hair number 695. He's got to count it. So if, he, if, if, he, if he's a God of so detailed, what are you worried about? Where's your faith? Why do you got to live by sight all the time? Well, if I see it, then I believe it. Why do you got to live like that? When I, why do we put more faith in our bank account than in our God? Why do we put more faith in our retirement plan than in our God? Don't you know that all that can go to hell in one day? Like my dad who had, you know, uh, my grandfather had a, a big you know, chain of supermarkets in, in Cuba. He lost it all because of communism. You can be on top of the world one year and down in the dumps in the other. And why are you putting your faith in that? Why can't you put your faith in the one that's the same yesterday, today, and forever? Why are you so focused on focusing on, on, on uh, that, oh, God can save me, but why aren't you focused that God can also heal you? Why can't you be focused that God can bring life to your death situations? Why can't you focus on that? We have this in, in this journey, we're going to be tested. In 1 John 5, 4, it says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. You ready? 1 John 5, 4. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Our faith. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Our faith. Our faith. Our faith. Salvation is already ours. By grace, true, but also by faith. The faith power in Jesus Christ. And I'm going to leave you with this. Three things that are required, the extras that are required, just to make sure, because nobody knows if these bands, uh, which have been in the garage for a couple years, I got to use them, bro. Uh, his dad's got a house in the keys, so give me him a hint. Um, these bands that I haven't used, like, I don't know, like in two years, I think, they can be having a little crack here somewhere, so when I extend it back, they can bust. They can, they can pop. These bands cost like five bucks. You put them back, and, and, and they can pop. Three things that you have to make sure, because we got the power, amen? We got the power. We got the faith. But the faith band, or the faith thing, needs to be right. In other words, check, check, check. And these three things have to be there. Number one, hope. Your faith has to be attached with hope. 
In other words, no stubborn doubting. You got to fight this good fight of faith. You got to fight this. You got to work it. It, it, it. It's like, well, Eddie, there's too many things. Can you just summarize it all? Okay, here it goes. The power. You got to work it. You got to work your faith. Power. Work your faith. Or, let, let me start over. Power. Faith. Work it. Check. Power. Faith. Work it. Check. Power. Faith. Work it. Check. What's the check? Hope. No stubborn doubting. You have doubt? It's canceled. One of the bands pops. No power. Number two, confidence. The Bible says in Hebrews 10.35, don't let your confidence be disappear. In other words, let your confidence in God be there. You believe in your heart and put corresponding action in progress. In other words, you, you talk about your results. We talk about our results more than our problems. I'm going to say it one more time. We talk about the results. Because somebody told me, to look, I, I'm going to talk louder next time. You talk about your results more than your problems. Don't come to me with all your problems. I already got problems myself. We all got problems. Share them. We, we all have our, you know, when you're in the valley, let's talk about it. But when you're just vomiting on me every time I see you, no. Uh, hey, Eddie, let me tell you something good that happened today. Hey, all right. Talk, because what you're doing is you're allowing the seed of doubt to get more power than your seed of faith. And we are farming. And number three, forgiveness. Turn to your Bibles to Galatians 5, 6, and this will be the last Bible verse. Galatians 5, 6, and as, you, as it's going there, forgive even if you don't feel like it. Be responsible. Like you, how many of you love working out, uh, how many of you love waking up at 4.35 in the morning to go to work? Nobody, right? But you do it anyway. Not because you feel like it. The same thing applies with the check part of living with complete faith. Make sure that love and forgiveness is there. And as it says in Galatians 5, 6, the only thing that counts is faith expressing through love. When I'm talking about love, it means forgiveness. It doesn't mean, it means humility. Love is humility, is forgiveness. Uh, love is patient. Love is kind. L love is not easily angered. Uh, uh, lo love is all, love doesn't keep records of wrong. Well, let me tell you what you did to me in 2008. You did this, uh, you did that. Uh, the last time you didn't say hello to me. Yeah. That's, it, it, you're doing that. You believe in the power, amen, so does Satan. You have a faith, hopefully it's connected to the right source, which is Jesus. You're checking your bands or, or, or you're doing the work. Hey, it loaded well. Now you, got, you better make sure that your love, your confidence, and your hope are in the band so that power can come out and you can hit your bullseye in a better angle and you won't be missing out. Because you can be going down underwater if you were an underwater hunter. I got an underwater hunter, hunter license. Now. If you were to go underwater and like, hey, hey, you're not going to catch many fish like that. Unless you're in a, like a sea of fish. When you go underwater, you're looking with your mask, and, pescado, oh, and you shoot. But, you know, you're not going to go shooting blindly. Oh, let me see. Let me just, you know, wherever, wherever it shoots. Uh, uh, That's, you're missing your target. You're missing your blessing. You're, you're not hitting the bullseye because you're not connected with faith with the right mindset. So tonight, as we bow our heads and close our eyes, The first thing with faith. I like to take a brief moment to say that if this ministry has inspired faith you is in any salvation. way, shape, or form, faith. I like to ask you to consider and pray about sowing a donation or an offering towards it. The money used will be to improve our broadcasts that are being brought to you, 
to impact the kingdom of God further and to help those that are walking in bondage and captivity be rescued, renewed, and restored. Another way you could cooperate to the ministry is by purchasing my book, Bless, Balance, and Complete, which will encourage you to rise higher in your Christian faith. Simply visit the link provided there on your screen for more information. You've got to get that spirit in yours connected 